Hello, I would like to thank the World Allergy Organization and the WISC 2020 Organizing Committee for giving me the opportunity to present to you some data about food allergen in the developing world. I have no disclosures. Food allergy is actually a significant healthcare problem in the developing countries. But widely varying study populations and methodologies and the use of surrogate markers such as self-report or hospitalization rates rather than objective methods such as oral food challenge limits robust estimation of the prevalence. Allergy is actually under-recognized as a clinical specialty in many developing settings, which leads to a limited number of allergists. Symptoms of food allergy may overlap with those of malnutrition, which is a major health care uh, problem. Looming food and agricultural issues in such fragile economies impacts the management of food allergy. And some major food items in the uh, famous food aid programs are frequently allergenic, including milk, eggs, soya bean, fish, wheat, and peanuts. Um, there is a time trend in the food allergy prevalence. It's actually increasing. I will take an example, one study from China in 1999 that was repeated with the same methodology 10 years later in 2009. In the first setting, the um, prevalence of food allergy to any food was three and a half percent. And then 10 years later, it turned to be 7.7 percent, which proves an actual increase. Allergy uh, and immunology in Africa. This was an article published in 2017 that won the uh, Elsevier Atlas Award. And it showed that tremendous increase in allergy in the African continent cannot simply be explained by the change in public hygiene. It's not due to an improvement of the public hygiene because there are still many pre-hygiene communities with sewage contaminated water supplies, helminth infestations, barefootedness and poor housing, and still there is a high prevalence of allergic diseases. Post-immune responses to helminthes were assumed to decrease the atopic response and uh, dewarming was expected to increase the prevalence of allergy, but actually this didn't happen. Because it was found that the intensity of the infestation uh, uh, is what counts, not only the mere presence. This study uh, uh, from Zimbabwe uh, proved that the intensity of schistosoma hematobium infection was negatively correlated to skin prick test reactivity and might specific IgE levels in areas of high transmission when there was a severe um, um, infestation with schistosoma hematobium. And what's uh, an, another interesting study showed antigenic cross reactivity between schistosoma mensonae and peanut. Um, as a matter of fact, the eggs of the schistosome bears cross-reactive carbohydrate determinants with the peanut allergen RH1. And the authors assumed that schistosome-induced IgG antibodies that are cross-reactive with allergens such as RH1 may block some of the hypersensitivity reactions. The big problem is that food allergy prevalence as well as local allergens, including foods, are not identified in many developing countries. Let's take Africa as an example. Food allergy has been increasing, especially in regions where populations adopted a westernized lifestyle. I'll take an example in uh, South Africa. The, um, the rural children had, a, by oral food challenge, had a uh, prevalence of 0.5%, while urban children, 2.5%. Um, and this was one of the fewest studies using oral food challenge. Another study from Egypt in, on peanut allergy showed oral food by oral food challenge and a prevalence of 4% among allergic children, not general population. By skin prick testing, there were uh, rates of 13.8% for fish 2.2% for sesame, and by self-report up to 28% by egg. So the main problem is that the methodologies are different between different countries and different studies. And this doesn't give us a robust 
uh, estimation of the real prevalence. Concerning allergens in Africa, uh, cow milk allergy is important as uh, in many Western countries. However, it's sometimes overdiagnosed. Seafood allergy is very common, especially in coastal areas in, in, in Congo, Egypt, South Africa, Nigeria, Mauritius, Morocco, Mozambique. And there are some food peculiarities such as potato, rice, and carrot in Zimbabwe, pineapple, popo, and oranges in Ghana, and okra and cow pea in Nigeria. Palm dates, which are very popular in the MENA region, uh, the Middle East, North Africa region, were found to be sensitizing allergens in a sector of atopic individuals. Some insects are consumed in Africa as an alternative to expensive protein food including silkworm, mealworm, caterpillars, and grasshoppers. And it was described in this uh, paper as ugly but tasty. Um, the food additive carmine, which is used in many, as a preservative in many foods, is actually derived from the female Dactylopius coccus insects. Although cockroaches are also edible insects, but allergy was only reported from inhalation of its antigens. Let's go to Asia. The overall prevalence of food, Asia, uh, food allergy in Asia, um, uh, in particular egg, peanut, and tree nuts, are generally lower than in Western countries. But shellfish allergy is the only one that is more common among the Asian populations. And wheat is becoming is an emerging important allergen that is increasingly reported from Thailand, Korea, and Japan, Pakistan, and is a common cause of anaphylaxis. I will take some examples. In, in Singapore, shellfish accounted for 5.2% of causes of food, uh, of, uh, of, uh, the prevalence was 5.2% in, in uh, Singapore by, uh, in a population survey, while peanuts were only 0.5% and 0.3%. And in Philippines, there were almost the same percentages for shellfish, peanuts, and tree nuts. And in Vietnam, seafood allergy uh, was found in 2.6%, while beef in only 0.8%, and milk in 02 to 0.7%. And there was a time trend for food triggers uh, of anaphylaxis among uh, children in the pediatric age groups. So as you can see, before the age of one year, the most common was egg. And this what turned to be peanuts and, uh, from one to five years of age. Shell uh, uh, bird nest allergy appears beyond the first year and increases progressively with age, as well as shellfish allergy beyond the age of 10 years. Other food allergy peculiarities in Asia include the bird nest allergy which is caused by uh, consumption of the bird nests produced by the swift bird. It is from the solidified uh, saliva of the bird. Um, it is harvested from the caves and used as a soup and a delicacy um, in many parts of Southeast Asia, including Hong Kong, China, and Singapore. Also ant egg anaphylaxis, the weaver ants in the tropical Asia, they take their eggs uh, and use them. Uh, in the preparation of food. It's an expensive Thai delicacy. Galacto-olicosaccharide, GOS, which is used as a prebiotic uh, in some milk formulas, has been found to be sensitizing. Also, uh, legumes and seeds, including the perilla seed, which is a common spice used in Korea, chickpea and fenugreek in many parts of India. Uh, oral mite anaphylaxis is increasingly reported in uh, subtropical climates such as Singapore, Japan, and Taiwan. And beef allergy, which is sensitization to alpha-gal, it has been reported from Sri Lanka and Vietnam. Let's go to Latin America. Um, again, there is a big problem with the prevalence. It is not clear. There are multiple potential causes for this, including poor availability and affordability of testing and inadequate labeling of food products. Challenge proving publications are very rare. One of them uh, in Argentina shows that cow's milk allergy by oral food challenge was only 1.4%, while Balserf report in uh, Chile 
uh, gave a percentage of 5.2%. And in Venezuela, in patients of atopic dermatitis, 80%. So again, the problem is of the standardization of methodology. A, a recent report from Mexico showed sensitization to any food in 24% of the population. And there are numbers uh, ranging between 15 and 60% and in Costa Rica. Uh, but uh, another um, recent study from Honduras showed by uh, oral food challenge proven allergy was present in only 9.3%. The common sensitizing foods in Latin America are not different from other geographic locations. And these include cow's milk, seafood, hen's egg, and peanut. But vegetables and tropical fruits are common allergens in Colombia, Costa Rica, and Mexico. Bean allergy, including soya bean, seems to be prevalent in uh, Latin America. And actually, oral mite allergy was uniquely reported in South America. Most cases of oral mite allergy comes, uh, come from Latin America um, have been residents in tropical locations with high temperature and humidity, which favors the replication of, uh, and proliferation of the mites. Common foods are pancakes, steak parmigiana, corn cake, taquinos, alfajor, and white sauce. Prevention of oral mite allergy is through keeping flour in low temperatures in sealed plastic or glass containers and environmental measures to diminish mite proliferation. There was uh, uh, actually criteria for diagnosis put forward by uh, uh, Professor Mario Sanchez Borges and colleagues. This includes symptoms after eating wheat flour containing food with previous history of atopy and positive specific IgE tests to dust mites, positive skin prick testing to suspected contaminated flour by prick prick testing technique, and negative skin prick testing to commercial white wheat flour uh, extract and uncontaminated flour. There were no reactions on ingested of uncontaminated wheat flour on, on oral food challenge. Identification of mites and or mite allergens by immunoassay in the suspected flour. And also the diagnosis can be augmented by the presence of aspirin and or NSAID hypersensitivity, which were found to associate this type of allergy. What is the cause, what is the, cause the main cause of a global difference in food allergy. There are many factors, including aeroallergen cross-reactivity and genetic heritability, uh, meteorological influences, including climate factors, latitude, season of birth, ethnicity, and of course, the dietary patterns, different food preparation methods that would alter the allergenicity of food, including peanut. We have many diagnostic challenges and problems in the developing world, including insufficient knowledge about food allergy by parents and even some healthcare workers. In vitro diagnostic tests are not easily accessed due to economic problems. Personal capa personnel capable of performing oral food challenge are not very much available. And the, therefore there is a diagnostic lag, um, especially in infants. Concerning skin testing, standardized allergen extracts might not represent the local allergens and unusual food stuff consumption, including edible insects, for instance, and cross reactivity of insect allergens with crustaceans, such as shrimps and house dust mite, represent a problem. An example of non traditional food allergen is a manioc tuber, which is consumed in some areas of South America. Uh, Africa and Asia, and of course, there is no commercial extract for it. Concerning in vitro testing, misinterpretation of serum specific IgE results uh, is a big problem in some settings. Physicians may consider any detectable level as diagnostic and put their patients onto unnecessary elimination diets. RAS testing without a solid phase and other semi-quantitative techniques are still being used frequently because of price, of course, issues. Component testing is not available in many low-income countries. And there are many management issues that have to be, that should be discussed in respect with local circumstances. For instance, babies with food allergy 
They can continue breastfeeding when their mothers avoid consuming the offending food, offending food, especially that formulas optimum for cow's milk allergy, such as amino acid or extremely hydrolyzed formulas, are expensive and often unavailable. Soy formulas may be considered in patients with IgE-mediated cow's milk allergy who are not sensitized to soya. Exclusive feeding on rice formula, which is a common practice, is nutritionally inadequate. Camel milk is currently under investigation in some parts. It is sometimes difficult to find a substitute with adequate nutritional value to avoid malnutrition. And there is inadequate labeling, labeling legislation in many um, um, developing countries, especially that there is high levels of illiteracy and so many people cannot read the labels. It is imperative in low income settings to weigh the preventive benefits of early introduction of solid foods against the risk of a shorter duration of exclusive breastfeeding on maternal and child health. As you know, there are uh, many preventive uh, um, studies going on now on, the, on the, the, the benefits of early introduction of solid food, particularly peanuts, but this may encourage the parents to, sh to shorten the duration of exclusive breastfeeding, which is very much needed to combat malnutrition in developing uh, countries. We have many unmet needs. First, under recognition of allergy as a medical specialty leads to a limited uh, health care and the limited health care infrastructure. Uh, the registries of food allergy and local allergens are not implemented in many developing countries. And allergy education actually should be tailored to the socio-cultural background of the target population, not one size fits all. Many uh, already uh, standardized programs are not understood by the local uh, um, patients or, or, or population. The gene environment interactions and the impact of early life microbiota on the expression of food allergy should be globally investigated. And lastly, physicians in the developing countries need full support from their governments, as well as scientific partnership from devoted global organizations to be able to address these caveats and conduct um, uh, uh, cutting edge research. Thank you very much for your attention.